What's happening guys? Welcome to RTH Tech TV. This is Lenovo IdeaPad 320, a budget laptop available at around 45,000 rupees or so. And uh, I've been using this laptop for more than seven days now. And uh, today let's review it on the lines of performance. That is for gaming and video editing, uh, battery life, display quality, design and build and sound quality. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And uh, also guys, complete list of specification, buying links and all the relevant links will be given in the description box below. So kindly check them out as well. All right guys, now firstly looking at design and build, it's completely made up of plastic and uh, weighs in at around 2.2 kgs, which is pretty hefty in my opinion. But at the same time, it definitely adds to the premiumness of the laptop. And even though it's made up of plastic, build quality feels solid and uh, has no creaking or squeaking issues as far as I've noticed. Now looking at the physical overview, on the left side it's pretty busy with the power adapter jack, battery or charging status indicator, RJ45 port, HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, headphone jack, Type-C port, SD card slot and a power status indicator. On the right side we have DVD drive and a Kensington slot. Now guys taking a look at performance, the particular model which I have comes with Intel Core i5 7 generation, 8 gigs of RAM, a dedicated 2 gigs of DDR5. NVIDIA GeForce 920MX GPU coupled with Intel's HD Graphics 620. Now speaking about real-time experience, I did play NFS Run which is a 17 GB game and the Call of Duty Ghosts uh, which is a 28 GB game and for the most part they were playable at high graphic settings but initially I did notice occasional choppiness and uh, frame drops but later on uh, the gameplay was pretty smooth and overall experience was far better. Now speaking about video editing, I used VSTC free video editor. Uh, playback while editing was pretty smooth and it could render a 9 minute full HD clip uh, in about 35 minutes or so, which I believe is pretty decent. Now the only thing which I did not like is vents to dissipate heat are placed behind the keyboard below the monitor. So while playing high end games, you'll notice a little bit of heating around the keyboard area. But at the same time, this isn't an issue in the normal day-to-day -day usage. So guys, to sum up, price to performance ratio was good. Performance was pretty satisfactory and I believe it's a decent machine uh, for gaming and video editing available at a very affordable price. Next up guys, speaking about battery life, while gaming, it should last you anywhere between 1.5 to 2 hours. Uh, on the other hand, if you are watching movies, playing songs or editing documents or so, then it should give you a battery backup anywhere between 2.5 to 3 hours. Now speaking about keyboard, it's a complete keyboard with number pad. Uh, keys are wide, they have good travel and feedback. Uh, by and large, I have no complaints regarding typing experience. But at the same time, I feel backlit keys uh, would have been more sensible at this price. Next, I also like touchpad. It's pretty smooth and responsive, supports multi-touch as well. And the clicks were pretty accessible. I didn't have to reach far ends. So in my opinion, both uh, keyboard and touchpad have been implemented pretty good on Lenovo IdeaPad 320. Next up guys, speaking about display quality, colors were good, display is sharp, it can get pretty bright as well and another advantage is it's anti-glare this time, uh, so even if you have a light source opposite to display, the content could be easily viewed. One thing which I did not like about the display is its viewing angles or uh, side visibility, it's pretty bad, uh, even if you slightly tilt the display or move the laptop, the content is not viewable. Next up guys, speaking about sound quality, speakers are placed at the bottom side. I would have preferred the front facing ones and even the quality was not up to the mark. It was not that loud, bass levels were also not that good, but voice clarity was decently good. For better audio experience, I would suggest you to purchase some external speakers uh, which should be available under 1000 rupees. So here's the sound sample guys, you can judge the sound quality. Alright guys, now to sum up, if you need good performance, lots of ports, connectivity, decent build quality, decent display, 
at an affordable price and if you can compromise little on sound quality and battery life then this is one of the best options available out there so that's it guys if you feel this video was informative give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and family follow us on twitter at rchh tech tv subscribe to us on youtube most importantly thanks for watching and i'll see you real soon